So for the fly, I'm going to start off with a shank prepared with a size 4 uh, trailer hook, some intruder wire, some brass dumbbell eyes, and today I'm using some 140 denier ultra thread in fluorescent pink. I'm using ice dub and fluorescent hot pink. I'm going to take a small clump, about that big. Right now I don't have a dubbing spinner because I lost mine, so I made I made one out of a paper clip. And yeah, I'm gonna spin it up. Don't have to pick it out or anything, just wrap it forward. Taking a few wraps over each other just to build up a bit of bulk in the back there. All right, next, I'm gonna tie in some Fish Hunter fluorescent pink schloppen. Get a medium-sized feather, this shouldn't be too big. Something about this size should be good. I'm gonna go towards probably the middle of the feather, get some of these medium-sized fibers. So I'm gonna tie it in by the tip few tight wraps and I'm going to wrap forward to keep the body of my fly the same size and not build up a big bump in the back there. And then take the side of my scissors and fold this feather back. Do the same on the other side. This just makes it easier as an optional step. I'm going to add in some uh, silly legs to the back. Uh, just two on each side. So I'm going to get two strands. And double them over in my hands like this. Snip them and tie them back. So I don't want these too long. So I'm gonna go just a bit past the hook. If you can see on this side, it's about that long. And I'm gonna tie up this part of the silly leg onto the shank so I don't build uh, a bump in the back. Take your time here, make sure the silly legs are where you want them and then secure them in. I'm gonna take some pink ostrich. I'm gonna take a few of these fibers at the top that are a little bit more fine. Maybe six fibers and I'll strip them off. And I'll tie these in two by two, just so I cover the entire uh, back station of the fly. These fibers don't have to be very long and they can just extend towards the end of the hook point. If you have a rotary vise, it's really useful because you can turn your hook around, your shank around and get a better angle to tie them in. Personally, I prefer this method to using a dubbing loop because you can you get uh, more even coverage on the back station or forward station, wherever you're putting in the ostrich. All right, so I'm just gonna wrap these uh, stems up the, uh, up the body of the fly, again, so I don't build up a big body. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna come in here with some 80 Amherst pheasant tail, and I'm gonna look for some medium length fibers, so you can measure them out. Again, just a little bit past the end of the hook, so I think about this size should be good. 
and I'm going to take four fibers. And snip them off the feather. Again, I'm just going to secure them in around the fly. All right, once those are tied in, I'm gonna take my body material, which is a flat diamond braid in fluorescent hot pink. And I'm just gonna tie this in along the side. Next, I'm just gonna throw in a half hitch, secure my thread, and use my rotary feature on my vise. And then just wrap this up the body. Here you can add a little bit of super glue for some durability. For me, I don't really mind. Usually this does not fall apart, so. And just wrap it up. For the front station, again, I'm going to put another dubbing loop. I'm going to use the same dubbing here. and just create a small bump. Again, you don't really need to pick this out. Just wrap it forward and on top of itself a few times and build up another small bump that will prop your feathers. All right, next, I'm gonna use the same feather. There's still a lot of schlopping left on there. So I'm gonna take a few of the fibers at the top here and pull the rest back and separate it so I have a new tie in point. And then I'm just gonna tie it in. This has a tendency to slip out so you wanna make sure you get some good wraps on there. Three is usually enough, sometimes four. And then I'd like to fold, fold back the tie in point. You don't have to cut that out, I just keep it in usually. And then I'm going to fold my feather with my scissors again, just for ease of tying. Pull everything back and then wrap forward. Again, three wraps is usually how many I do. You can do more, you can do less. Now I'm gonna add in some of this pink marabou. You wanna select a feather that is that has a thin stem and has some wispy fibers. All right, so here's the feather I've selected. It has a thin stem. And I'm just gonna take about half of that material off the bottom and just strip it off the, the stem until I'm left with something that kind of looks like this. I'm gonna grab the tip of the feather and then just pull everything else back. So I have a nice tie-in point right here place it on the shank and give it a few good securing wraps. Again, I'm gonna pull it back. And this one, I usually like to snip. I'm gonna use my hackle pliers because it's a more fine stem. And I'm gonna fold everything back. I'm gonna push everything back and give it a few turns. So I'm gonna push everything back again and just tie off my stem. Go in with my scissors and snip out my stem. It's time for some more ostrich, so I'm going to use the same feather. I don't have the longest fibers, I've kind of used a lot of those, but I'll, I'll make do with what I have here. And just try and select some of the longer fibers that I have. So I probably want 
maybe eight, nine, maybe 10 of these ostrich fibers. And I will do the exact same thing and tie them on just around this forward station. All right, so once you're done tying in all of the ostrich, I like to wet my fingers and push everything back just so it doesn't get in my way. And I'm gonna take my scissors and cut off some of the butts that were left off from the ostrich. Next, I'm gonna take some more Lady Amherst and I'm gonna go for some of these longer fibers right here. Again, I'm just gonna use probably four or so. All right, so now I'm gonna tie in my Lady Amherst. And I want this to extend about to the end of the hook, as you can see right there. Two on top, spread apart in a V like that, and the same on the bottom. Take a few more securing wraps just to lock everything in place. And I'm gonna cut out the butt of these fibers. All right, so now I'm gonna use some pearl lateral scale. Just need probably one strand of this. And I'm gonna tie it on, on either side. So I'm gonna go on this side, put in a bit, and this should extend a little bit longer than my silly legs. Snip out my excess, save that for another fly. Then I'm gonna take some more securing wraps here. Make sure you don't build up too big of a head up front though. And if you do, it doesn't really matter too much because we'll go over it with a bit more dubbing. So I'm gonna throw another dubbing ball and just a pinch more of that fluorescent pink dubbing from Hairline. Just a pinch. This is just to clean everything up. So I wanna make a thinner noodle. You don't really wanna build up too much bulk here. This will just be to cover my thread wraps in the front. So if any fibers are getting trapped, you can use a bodkin or just to smooth them out with my fingers. Then I'm just going to wrap this forward. Some people like to wrap this around the eyes. Personally, I just wrap up to the eyes and then take the end, bring it forward and secure it. Lastly, whip finish twice just for security. Then I add a little bit of super glue just to lock everything in place. The worst thing is when your fly comes apart on the river, so I always just wanna take the extra steps to make sure that it's uh, more durable. Here you can just, you can use UV cement. I'm just using regular super glue here. And then I like to put it on a, a bodkin here, just so I don't get any super glue on accident in my materials. So I like to pull everything back and then just do a little drop right on the head there. And there you go. Here's a mini ostrich intruder.